Do your inner tie rods look like this? It's the driver's side. And passenger side's not bad. It actually holds together better. Keep watching. I'll show you how to fix these. It's my favorite time of the day. Working on the LS460. Just remove the under trays as normal. I'm not going to use an electric thing again so I can talk a little bit when I'm doing this. But um, So here's the deal. I am replacing something in the steering system because now that failed. And I say this every time, but hopefully after this, the car will be perfect and solid again. But I just lose hope every time I try fixing this thing or working on it. It's like a freaking lemon. I must have got a lemon because just there's so much, everything keeps going wrong with this car. So you'll also notice um, some, oh, of course my light's out, some oil up here. I'll talk about that and kind of, I don't know if you can see this, but top of the screen right there, you can see some wetness. That's probably the valve cover gaskets and the fuel pump gaskets, and I haven't changed those yet, so that's just dripping down a little bit. So I'm uh, going to remove some more 10 millimeter bolts, just this one, I believe, and then this front one, and then I'll get into detail on... Uh, what exactly the plan is and I'll show you the suspension again that's still holding up and we'll go from there Ta -da! so we are changing the inner tie rods right here as well as the outer tie rods right here and as a bonus We've got uh, new boots here, so we're going to replace these old boots. I mean, I'm sure they're fine, but this one clamp is not reusable, so you have to buy a new inner clamp and hope that your boots aren't ripped, or just buy you know new boots that include new clamps on both ends, and they're pretty cheap too. Um, so there's that. And I want to say this is the easiest repair um, so far. So I thank Mr. Uh, Toyota for designing the steering rack um, in front versus being buried behind the engine normally. So essentially my plan as to not disturb or try to not disturb the alignment of the wheels is we're going to remove, keep the wheels straight just like they are, flat on the four post. We're going to remove the tie rod here and we have a tool that's going to break it loose here. Um, once we do that, we're going, to, we're going to assemble the new inner tie rod to the new outer tie rod at the exact same length and number of threads. And then we're going to install this back in and then simply pop the outer tie rod back in the knuckle wheel would not move. So that's my plan. I don't know if that's going to go um, how I hope, but uh, essentially that's it. It looks like a pretty simple repair and I, I haven't found any videos on this on the YouTubes or anywhere on people replacing the uh, inners or outers and I mean my, why, why not, right? We've already replaced every single component. The uh, control arms, one, two, the knuckle, the suspension, the upper control arms. Literally everything except the outer tie rod and the inner tie rod. And even the end links here, those are brand new. So, I have a massive um, clunking still. It's like a knocking noise. Only when you turn. So my guess is this is um, bad. Hopefully. I, don't, I honestly don't know what else it could be. But it's only when you turn the wheel um, to extremes. And when you're stopped in very slow speed, it's not at the highway speed, it's not while driving, nothing like that. It's just, um, it, it, it sounds like a bad uh, mount, um, just like a clunking mount, but it only happens when you steer. So, I mean, here's here, here we are. This is where we're at. 
Um, it tends to not happen when it's colder. Once it warms up, it gets really bad. Um, and then technically the test for this is if this inner tie rod cannot hold itself up horizontally. So if we take this off and this is just kind of floppy, um, well, we kind of know that's bad, but this should hold itself up once it's screwed in. It should just kind of sit there. Um, the other thing, there's a washer on the end of this that you heard fall. That's important. We'll uh, keep an eye on that when we put it in, and then we'll torque it to spec and all that. And I'll show you what tools I got to uh, remove this. But, um, yeah, so that's my plan. That's what I'm going to try. Pop this off, knock it down, and then um, hopefully just keep this out of the way and then pop this loose and then, you know, spin it around and get out of there. Um, and then I mentioned the oil. There's a little bit of oil dripping down in here just from the valve cover gaskets that I never got around to and the oil or the fuel pump gaskets way on top just drips down. Um, I did see some coolant here and my heart sank, but that was just when I spilled coolant doing the um, intake manifold gasket and the harness there. So that's all good. Front case still looks fine. Um, same as the, my ISF. Um, that one I redid, but this one, I'm hoping I never have to do that one. But we shall see. That actually went exactly according to plan. Um, and I'm no expert, but this thing just kind of... I don't think that's normal. This is so loose in here. It's just, yeah, not good. Um, okay, so the actual outer doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a little um, looser than brand new, but there's no actual like play in the ball or the joint or anything. But this is, uh, yeah. So there's one thing I want to mention. Some VINs have older inner tie rods that um, have two grooves here. So you see one groove and this is where the boot sits. Some of them have two. If you have two, you definitely need the new boots that I showed earlier. You can't reuse your old boots if you have two grooves. They discontinued them and this is like the new version with the one groove for 07 to 17. But like I said, there were some in there earlier years that might have had that two groove so keep that in mind that's important outer tie rods those are easy um, those are the same you know all 07 to 17 same part number for that so next thing we got to do is just pound this little washer these tabs pound them out so because this washer kind of holds this thing in here so it doesn't spin and then we will crack this loose from the uh, steering gear assembly and then to take the boot off I just use a razor blade and cut it off because uh, other than that you can't um, if you're trying to do it this way and line everything up the same old and new you're going to need new boots anyways obviously because that's just kind of uh, in the way when you're trying to do all this okay we got the other side off this light is there we go same process um, yeah super easy and then just make sure to Hammer this with like a chisel or some kind of punch, otherwise you can't spin the tie rod off. This one doesn't seem quite as bad as the driver's side. Um, it's still pretty loose, but this one, this is, you can feel it's like much, much looser. So next step, I'm, I'm waiting for the tool from Amazon. It's like a clamping thing. I, you could use like a vice grips or something, but there's an actual tool that grips it around there. So we'll get that and pop them off and then kind of compare them off the car to the new ones. And then uh, again, my plan for the new ones, um, I guess I don't even have to put them together. I can just get the inner, tighten the inner on and then put just twist on the outer and then uh, just until it pops in. You know, just like that. Same exact without moving the the wheels at all. That's super cool if that works. Like I'm super stoked. So yeah, until tomorrow. So day two we have our contraption here. This basically just clamps around the um it's like a U, like a muffler clamp almost. 
around the inner tie rod, tighten these down, and then I put a 3 8 in here, and then probably just pop it loose, uh, well, the other way, counterclockwise. So we'd be pulling this way to break it loose. There is some, like, uh, movement in the actual steering shaft I see here. I don't know if that's normal. I guess I'll compare that to the other side. I guess some play is probably normal, but we'll see if that's normal or not. Or if the, the clunking continues after all this, then, um, you know, I guess we need a new steering rack. <laughs> Um, but we're going to pop this loose and then screw, take this off. Yeah, see that? It's like play. I don't like that. Well, we'll see. So, this thing failed tremendously because all it did was slip. It had no grip on this really. What you really need is whatever special fork fits on here. Um, I had a giant crescent wrench here, and that popped it loose, no problem. So um, now you can actually spin it off by hand because it's once you loosen it, then that's it. So I'll get this side off and the other side off, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got here's the original passenger side. These washers are very sharp if you pound them down. I'm bleeding quite badly on the tip of my finger. So I'll just have to ignore that. Um, so this one, not too bad. There's some resistance in here. Driver's side, definitely much worse. I mean, it's very, there's no like physical in and out movement. But it's just really got a lot of play in there. And if you compare that to the new one, uh, I can't even move it. I can't even move it. So that should give you an idea <laughs> of uh, what it's supposed to be like. Um, so this other tool was included with the first tool. The reason I couldn't use this was because I couldn't get it around the ball, um, tie rod end. However, since we're installing it without it on there, I'm planning on sticking this on here and then basically like a stud remover almost. This holds on to it in theory, although it could just slip again, I guess, because there's nothing really to hold on to. And in theory, we should be able to torque this down to whatever spec is torque spec. Don't forget your washer or going wide open throttle with an exhaust while I'm doing the video. So now my plan is to put this on, tighten it in, and then um, put the boot on, get that done, and then put the, um, the tie rod end on after that. Because basically, like I said, we're just fitting it in here and then fitting it into the wheel or the knuckle. So... Um, the uh, position is fixed, the length is fixed essentially, we're just ah, I put a band-aid on this or something, it's super loose. Uh, yeah, so I'm just threading this on and then until it lines up with the knuckle and then pushing in the knuckle. So I will check on the torque spec of this and get back to you. Found some torque specs here. Um, so what I found was tie rod to the steering knuckle, so that's the outer, 44 foot-pounds, and then tie rod assembly to the power steering link. It's got to be the inner, and we're at 41. So essentially, not, not too much torque, 41 and 44. Uh, there's some other stuff in case you want to jot any of that down, but um, kind of went over everything else, and this was the only thing that made sense, tie rod to power steering link. So get those on there, torque them down, and next steps. Important little tidbit here. You'll notice this washer has two little teeth on it. And the teeth go in, and then these teeth sit inside of this little groove you see on this power steering uh, assembly. So that sits in there, that locks the washer right there. 
And now, once we torque this down, we're going to want to tap, basically tap the washer over this flat portion, and that's to prevent it from coming loose somehow on its own. So, yeah, there's just a tiny bit of play. Okay, so that's that, and you'll see how this just sits here. I mean, you got to put some decent force into it to get it to move. And the other one, just so, just so you remember how the other one looked. I want to cut my finger again on that washer, but I mean, yeah, that sh that should hold that whole assembly up. Thanks, Lexus. So now we can slide that tightening tool over this and then torque this monster down to 41 foot-pounds and then install the boot, the clamp, this clamp, spin on the tie rod, and then slide it in. So I'll show you this part. There's our 42 foot-pounds. So that's good and this clamp worked perfectly here. As long as you don't have the outer on there, it's good to go. And now we can tap this washer flat so it holds it. And then here, let me see if we can get in a little bit closer. I don't know if that's just normal play, like between the gears and uh, everything else in there. We'll see. I'm worried about it for sure. <laughs> this car just keeps on giving. Okay, and the boot time. So, boot comes with a simple spring clamp. Um, then also the strange looking clamp that you might have never seen before. Um, this is kind of similar to like a CV boot clamp. You actually need a special tool to uh, crimp it, crimp it down, tighten it. So let me just make sure I've got everything squared away here. Uh, here's your single groove like I mentioned earlier. This is gonna go on like that. Uh, but first we're gonna get this on here Put that on like so. Oh, no, I gotta knock down our washers first, but essentially this is gonna go just like that so Let me knock these down before I forget All right So we've got our boot on You're gonna have to push it Over the inside here Until it seats on that little groove and you'll feel it Kind of pop into the position on the right, and then you gotta somehow get the other inner boot over the power steering assembly, which that's pretty easy. And then, yeah, just make sure that's seated on the groove, and then you're good. Put your little clamp on the outside here. <laughs> Like so, these are your favorite pliers, boom, and then this, basically what we're going to do is just grab that tool and then pinch it this way and tighten this little top nub, and that'll that'll tighten up the, uh, the whole clamp, and that's it. So what's going to happen next is... I'm going to put this back on and something's going to be out of alignment. Um, I'm going to have to get an alignment, you know, something's going to be messed up where to the point where this just didn't work. So we'll see, hopefully not, but I just need to make sure if this sits in there like that, uh, we're going to roughly have that many threads. Like so, I just do that for illustration purposes. And I'll put the new nut on our tie rod end here. Just hold that in place, like so. Okay, that's in place right there. That's where that's gonna sit. Now we're gonna see how does that compare to. The original and I forgot to add the nut on there oh well 
Um, hmm. Not great. Not great at all. It looks like for some some reason this is uh, not lining up how the original did. This is all the way back. I'm not sure give us a good idea. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll see. If we have to do an alignment, no big deal. Slip out the jack stands in the string again, and then we can reach under here fairly easily under the front, and then do our measurements and uh, do the alignment. And I can do another quick video on how we do that, but I've done that a few times already. So we'll get it close here and see what happens. Okay, boots on, outer's in, the nut is loose, and there's enough space in this wheel area to bend the um, the tie rod in a little bit and then kind of rotate it and then spin it all the way on without removing the wheel. So that's it. Um, alignment next. At least we'll do the measurements, I guess. We'll straighten the wheel and then do our um, front and rear toe on the front compared to the back and see where, where we're at. If we have to make any adjustments here, um, you know, pushing this tie rod out or in. Car on the ground. We've got the wheel locked straight. We've got our classic jack stands and string front to back and everything is perfect. So what I did, I measured six inches to the center wheel cap and then you take your measurements in the front of the wheel and the back of the wheel. So here's our measurements. Basically um, four and seven eighths plus a sixteenth or so. I'm just using a tape measure so it's not very incredibly accurate. Four and seven eighths on the rear. That means this front right is toe zero, essentially. Same driver's side, toe zero, four seven eighths, four seven eighths, pointing straight ahead. And then the rear front, uh, it's a little bit towed out, so five inches, five inches in the front, so a little bit toe out, and then four and seven eighths, four and seven eighths. So no alignment needed with inner and outer tie rods. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned something. Video wouldn't be complete without a test drive. Uh, so it definitely, definitely, definitely fixed my problem. And steering feels tighter even more so than it was before with everything else. And this is not something you can really check without, I mean, you can't jack up the car and pull the wheels because you're not gonna get that, um, that play that you're looking for. And until I took everything apart and saw how loose those inner tie rods were, I never would have known and I just would have been just guessing blindly so at 80 on the freeway 7580 the car used to shake just enough that it would vibrate the mirror rearview mirror uh, and then I could feel it through my leg through the gas pedal and a little bit through the steering wheel and I thought it was like um, the ball joints uh, wheel balance uh, what else did I do? Control arms, all that stuff, but I still had uh, that little bit of vibration. And then the biggest thing I noticed was when you're at a stop and you're on the brakes, before I would get this just terrible um, clunking, like a popping almost, and that was the uh, inner tie rod. And now it's it's gone and again the just the steering wheel just if you go like this you'll feel a little extra bit of fun a little bit of more tightness in there and, and firmness that you might not have had before and again at 60 plus you're getting just perfect smooth driving so whew, happy to report I don't need a new steering rack and the inner tie rods did the trick um, but like I said, you gotta you gotta at least drop the outer tie rod and see if the inner holds it up or not. Because um, the video was really clear on how loose those were; they couldn't even hold up their own uh, shaft. So, till next time, again. Hopefully, there's nothing coming up in the next 80,000 miles, 200k. Let's let's cross our fingers. Hope we can make it 200k with no major issues. Um, I got a tire rotation coming up, I think, and I'll rebalance the wheels at some point in the next six months. Um, but until then, you see I'm cruising at like 65. 
and it's just it's totally smooth and it's and it's straight look at this we're tracking straight even though we took the inner and outer tie rods out so that worked too I'm really impressed about that um, so yeah Go change your inners. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, critiques, and be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Till next time. See ya. Thanks.